This podcast series is made possible thanks to the generous support of the Cooperative of American Physicians. Physician founded and physician governed, CAP provides superior medical malpractice coverage and solutions to more than 12,500 California physicians and helps them realize professional and personal success. Upon joining CAP, members receive risk management services, claim support, and a dedicated in-house defense firm, practice management resources, and so much more. CAP has been a long-standing premier LACMA partner and continues to support our members every day. To learn more, visit capphysicians.com. That's capphysicians.com. Welcome to this edition of Clear as Mud, the podcast dedicated to bringing clarity to medicine. I'm your host for this episode, Dr. Jeffrey Lee, the president of the LA County Medical Association. We're uh, joined today by Senator Bradford, who is a, a senator from the 35th District, and I uh, want to welcome you and thank you for your time. Um, tell us a little bit about your district, Senator. I represent the 35th Senate District, which is in the South Bay. It's considered probably the most diverse district in the state of California, Senate District, that is, uh, with the cities of Inglewood, Hawthorne, Lawndale, Torrance, Gardena, Compton, communities of Watts, Willowbrook, and San Pedro. And uh, we have five hospitals uh, in that district as well. So, Wow, I didn't realize there's five hospitals there. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your priorities for health care for this coming year. I just want to keep people well. <laughs> um, I have a nurse's break uh, piece of legislation that makes sure that nurses are afforded adequate rest breaks between all uh, their work that they do, and it's near to dear to me because not only is my mother a retired registered nurse, but uh, I have two nieces that are nurses as well, so uh, it's uh, something that uh, I'm always going to look out for. My mother wouldn't have uh, have it any other way to make sure I took care of nurses, so she took care of me. With all these nurses in the family, I'm surprised you didn't go into health care yourself. How did you end up going into uh, public policy? A GPA. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> I was a biology major. I had every intention of being a doctor. I was pre-med all the way up until my senior year. And uh, a GPA, I'll leave it gotcha. at that. No, I, and, and um, all seriousness, in uh, my senior year, I had to make a tough decision on whether I was going to repeat some classes or changed my major, and I switched to poli-sci, and it's been downhill ever since. So, <laughs> Well, we're really glad that uh, you you know, you know ended up going into that, that direction. So, My mother's not. <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, you know, the past couple of years have been really, really, um, uh, you know, disruptive, uh, you know, to say the least. Um, how has COVID affected your perspective on health care? Uh, it hasn't affected my... Um, you know, perspectives on healthcare, it's just exposed what I already knew, the deficiencies, the fissures, the inadequacies that have existed in delivering health care to especially working people, poor people. And um, people always want to say communities of color, yes, but they're not synonymous, you know, because every person of color is not poor and every poor person is not a person of color. But uh, folks who can't afford proper health care, they have suffered and they have always been, suffered. And we've seen the disparities and all this pandemic has done is just expose those deficiencies that were already in existence there. Hmm. Well, any last words that you want to say to our, our physician members? Um, any? Just keep up the good work. I mean, you're vitally important in our communities. I mean, uh, it's important that we have doctors and nurses from the community as well and uh, look like the people that you serve. That's important as well. And just having the commitment to serve all people and not let some of the pre-existing biases in healthcare uh, that we all know exist uh, with our biases towards sickle cell anemia and thinking that when folks come in complaining about pain that they're just looking for hmm. some, you know, some pain pills when they're really suffering tremendously. I have plenty of friends and family members who have suffered from that disease and, and understanding, you know, the infant mortality rate, you know, why is it so high, much higher in the African-American community than any other one? So, and you hear from people like Serena Williams who showed how she was treated when yeah. she complained, when she was expecting a child. So just being a lot broader and accepting and willing to understand that we might look alike, but mm -hmm. you know we don't all necessarily function alike, and we should respect that. Yeah. 
Well, Senator, want to thank you so much for being generous with your time with us. And uh, thank you for your, your, the work that you do. And thank you for being on the Clear as Mud podcast. Uh, Clear as Mud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's over already. Wow. Yeah. And we only just begun. Thank you. Thanks.